Hello, church. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Epiphany. I'm Pastor Colleen. I'm the pastor here at Grace in Shillington. It is a joy to have you with us today as we gather to worship together. We continue to collect soup and crackers for our Super Bowl of Caring. We will collect the soup and crackers until February 13th when we will bless the food, and then that soup and crackers will all become part of our food pantry ministry. So if you're in the area and you can drop off those items at the church, we would be most appreciative. But for now, I invite you to prepare worship space at home. Light a candle, have some bread and wine or grape juice ready for communion, and then sit in your most comfortable chair, Take a deep breath and know for this time that we are together and God is most certainly present. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading for today is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. 
Sarah's soaring attendants above him each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraphs touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitants, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. And until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vest is the intentness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again. Like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is when it is felt. The holy scent it seed is its stump. The word of the Lord thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, o Lord with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your prayer. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the Lord rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. The great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I will walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your, your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading for today is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with the first verse. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I had handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn that had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. 
Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then I, it was I or they, so we proclaim and say, you have to come to believe me. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way away from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish in their nets that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a saying which goes, God does not call the qualified, but qualifies the called. In other words, when God is seeking people to become disciples, God isn't looking for the most magnificent speaker or the gold medal winning athlete. God isn't looking for the Nobel Prize winner or the PhD. God isn't looking for the best and the brightest to answer God's call. God is looking for the people who know without God, they are nothing. God is looking for the people who are open to God's spirit. God is looking for the sinners, the broken, the imperfect. Well, folks... I think it's our lucky day. The lessons for this week shed much light on how God qualifies the called. In the Isaiah text, as the presence of the Lord fills the temple, Isaiah laments that he is too sinful and unclean to be in God's presence. So one of the seraphs touches a live coal to Isaiah's lips, saying, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. How amazing it would be 
to receive God's forgiveness in such a powerful way, a way where there would be no doubt that it had happened. And when God asks Isaiah, whom shall I send? Isaiah immediately responds, here am I, send me. God lifts up Isaiah to speak the word of God. He empowers and calls Isaiah to share with the people who were in desperate need of this prophetic and life-giving word. God does not let Isaiah's sinfulness, doubts, or fear stop God from calling him into service. God chose Isaiah and God qualified Isaiah to do the work that needed to be done. In Luke's gospel, there's a similar calling. Like Isaiah, who confessed his sinfulness in the face of the mightiness of God, Peter falls at the feet of Jesus following the miraculous catch of fish and begs, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. In each case, God receives and accepts broken and undeserving people before sending them out to proclaim the same grace and love that each had freely received. And what we discover is how this is what God always does. God recruits people who have made terrible choices. God invades the most broken of lives and fills them with light. In today's lessons, we are witnesses to the mighty power of God. For these are not stories about the power of human beings to change their lives, to leave everything behind and follow. No. These are stories about the power of God. The power of God to walk right up to a group of fishermen and work a miracle. To create faith where there was no faith. To create disciples where there were none just a moment before. This is not a story about three courageous fishermen who sacrificed all to serve God. They did no such thing. If they did anything under their own power at all, it was simply that they opened themselves up to the Spirit of God. God acted, and the disciples let their nets wash out to sea. Barbara Brown Taylor puts it this way, their minds were not on what they were leaving, but on whom they were joining. Their hearts did not cleave to what was falling from their hands, but to what they were reaching out to find. And in that God-drenched moment of their turning to follow, the miracle occurred. Their lives flowed in the same direction as God's life. In this gospel lesson, Peter, James, and John are swept into the flow of God's will. In that moment, Jesus acts, and their lives are forever changed. And it doesn't matter who they had been. What mattered now was who they could be with Jesus. And this is true for our lives as well. For it doesn't matter who we've been or who we think we are, for when we allow God to touch us and fill us, we become more than we could ever hope to imagine. As we allow God's love and grace to fill us and work through us, we become God-bearers in the work, spreading the love of Christ and doing the work of building God's kingdom. And when Jesus comes to those fishermen on that beach, he offers words of comfort. He says, do not be afraid. Jesus comes so that we don't have to be afraid anymore. I love that. And I love that Jesus doesn't stop at offering comfort and encouragement, but moves on to give Peter something to do, something bigger and larger than anything he'd ever imagined catching people up in the unimaginable and life-changing grace of God. Peter has no reason to expect this call, and many reasons, I'm sure, to doubt it. Yet, Jesus calls him anyway. 
And I love that because this too is how God works. Always choosing the unlikeliest of characters through whom to work. Putting aside all their doubts and fears and excuses and professed shortcomings to do marvelous things through them. But of course, the story's not quite done. Because after these words, the fishermen give everything up. Their professions, their livelihood, their family and friends, everything in order to follow Jesus. And quite frankly, I can't say I love this part. Not because it's not a cool scene, it definitely is. I mean, thinking of them just getting up and and going to follow Jesus with little or no idea where he will lead them. I'm not sure, though, that I love this part because I don't think Jesus is talking only to Peter and his friends. I think he's talking to us, too. I think he's calling all of us to put aside our doubts and fears and excuses and professed shortcomings to do marvelous things through us. Would I follow Jesus? Do I follow Jesus? Would I give up everything for Jesus? These are serious and significant questions. And yet, as much as I wonder about those questions or really wonder about my own adequacy to respond to the Lord's call, I'm reminded that in this respect, too, this story isn't done. Jesus is still coming to us to say, do not fear. Jesus is still coming to us to call us to things we can't imagine. Jesus isn't finished calling people who know their sins and doubts and fears and inadequacy firsthand. And Jesus is still coming and speaking to us, and by his speaking accomplishes in us what he's asked, because that's what the Word of God does always. And just as Jesus' call came to unlikely people who were in the midst of other things and who had no thought of volunteering, so too Jesus' call call comes to us when we are in the midst of doing other things. Jesus comes to each and every one of us right where we are. Just as he came to Peter and the disciples in the midst of their daily lives and work, Jesus comes to us in the midst of our daily lives. He comes regardless of who we are. He comes regardless of who we think we are. He comes regardless of whether we believe we're worthy or regardless of whether or not we think we are ready. Jesus comes to us in the midst of our humdrum lives and looks us in the eye, reminds us not to be afraid, and equips us to follow. The good news for us today is how Jesus is not impressed by our natural abilities, appearance, talents, or what we've made of ourselves. His call does not await the completion of our education. It doesn't wait for the completion of our work time and the beginning of our retirement. Jesus' call does not depend on the size of the nest egg we've put away. Jesus' invitation is all about God and how God acts on our lives and through our lives. Jesus' call comes on his time schedule, not ours. And what Jesus asks us to do may or may not be in line with some skills we're already comfortable with. It may be an extension of some talent we've already developed, but it may just as likely be a gift we didn't even know that we had but Jesus knew we had it. Jesus said to Peter, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. We would do well to remember that the extraordinary catch of fish happens in Jesus' presence. These newly minted apostles don't haul in the net of fish on their own. They don't leave everything and follow Jesus because they're confident in their own abilities. They leave everything and follow Jesus because they're confident in Jesus' command, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. May we on this day hear the call 
to cast our nets out into deeper waters. May we open ourselves up to the life-changing Spirit of God to use us to strengthen the weak, to lift up the despairing, to feed the hungry, and may we follow the one who taught us to meet people where they live and work and play and show them the irresistible love of God. Amen. And now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy are you, O God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets and deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of our natural world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse toward violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. 
Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. Be with all those who are dealing with the COVID virus, those who are sick, those who are recovering, and those who have died. We pray especially this day for Austin Brown, Joyce Brown, Karen Capiello, Sarah Cummings, Sherry Daddario, Tom DeWitt, Joan Esterly, Mason Fiervanti, Marilyn Herzog, Pat Lamber, Skip O'Leary, Anne and Jim Papada, Betty Rickenbach, Myrtle Schlauch, Sue Sipos, Claire Steffi, Scott Van Horn, Michael Van Reed, Marie Wagner, Kristen Widener, Rosemary Whitmer, Joan Youngerman, and Kathy Zadlow. Grant them healing and wholeness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For our Grace Prayer Family Ministry, we pray for Catherine Laux, Anthony and Jody Lawrence, Anthony L., Nikki, and Anthony Lawrence. God of grace, hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us into your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promise, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you 
and enough for all. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.